In this video, we'll talk about how binary values are used to represent integer numbers. In one case, we'll talk about using bits and binary values to represent only non-negative numbers, which we call unsigned numbers. So we're talking about zero and positive numbers. But we also need to represent negative numbers, and we call those things signed numbers. And so we'll also talk about, in this video, how we represent negative numbers as signed numbers. We've gotten a pretty good start with binary numbers already. Let's look at just eight bits and we'll talk about unsigned numbers. So we, we've shown how we can have 256 different possible bit combinations in one byte. There are eight bits and each of those eight bits can be either a zero or a one and that gives us a total of 256 different values. And with the unsigned number representation, we associate each one of these bit patterns with a number between zero and, in this case, the maximum value is 255. So we can represent zero and the positive numbers up to 255 with eight bits according to this pattern. Here I've shown the bits in binary notation and over here since there's a one-to-one -one correspondence with hex I've shown the value of each one of these bytes with two hex digits. So hex digit 00, zero corresponds to the, the value 0. Hex digit 05 corresponds to the value 5. Hex digits 0a corresponds to the number 10 and so on all the way up to FF which corresponds to 255. So we can with one byte we can represent any number between 0 and 255 using the unsigned number representation. Now the idea here is that we've got these bits and we're showing how to interpret them and this is these are the bits shown in binary and hex and this is the interpretation shown here as a decimal number. And this is only one way to interpret these bit patterns. This is a way of, of interpretation that gives us uh, numbers between 0 and 255. But we'd like to have some negative numbers and this way of interpreting the bits doesn't include any negative numbers. So we want to move on to talking about sign numbers uh, in a bit. But first let's just focus on the 8-bit numbers that we have here. They're always non-negative and range, ranging from 0 to the maximum value which in this case we've got 8 bits so our maximum value is 2 to the 8 minus 1. Remember that 2 to the 8 is 256 so 2 to the 8 minus 1 is our maximum value. Our maximum value with the unsigned number representation is always a bit pattern that consists of all 1's in binary or all F's in hex. Now let's take a look not at 8 bits but at 32 bits. Remember that 32 bits is a word so we have 4 bytes. So here I've shown in this table all the values, all the possible combinations of 32 bits. Well obviously there are a lot of combinations so I haven't shown them all. I've left out the ones in the middle. And you see we've got four bytes, eight bits here, another eight bits, another eight bits, and another eight bits. So we have one, two, three, four bytes. And we can represent those with binary, as I've done in this column, or we can represent them in hex. For each byte, we've got two hex digits. So one byte, two bytes, this is a half word. And this is the other half word, 0000, zero, zero, zero. that's two bytes there. And here are our bit patterns, starting out with all zeros, which we interpret as the number zero. Now this is unsigned number representation, so we keep going in the positive direction all the way up to our maximum value, which is 4 gig, that is 2 to the 32, minus 1. So 4 gig minus 1 a number that's a little larger than 4 billion. And the largest number in unsigned number representation 
whether it's a byte or a word or some other size, is the value that has all ones in binary. It's all ones. Or in hex, it's all Fs. Before we get to sign numbers, let's talk about how many different values we can represent with the unsigned form of number representation. So what is the largest number representable? We might ask about bytes, half words, or words. With a byte of 8 bits, we have 2 to the 8 minus 1. So our maximum value was 255. In hex, it's all Fs, the bit, the bit pattern with all 1 bits. With a half word, we've got 16 bits to work with, so our maximum value is 2 to the 16th minus 1, and it happens to be this number here, 65,535. You can also express this as 64K minus 1. And in hex, that number can be expressed as 2 bytes, FF, FF. Finally, with a word of 4 bytes, we have 32 bits to work with, so our maximum value is 2 to the 32nd minus 1. Again, a number that's just a bit larger than 4 billion. More precisely, it's 4, 4 gig minus 1, or in hex, all Fs. Now let's look at another way of interpreting the bit patterns as numbers. And this is called signed number representation. It's also called two's complement number representation. So what I'm describing here is two's complement number representation. Here's our list, again, our table of all the possible bit patterns we can have. I'm going to start by looking at an example of only one byte. So we only have eight bits here. Uh, in subsequent slides, I'll look at larger numbers, but this is a little bit more manageable. So uh, we can express the possible combinations of bits, either in binary or in hex, starting with zero and going all the way up to FFF. And with unsigned numbers, we can represent numbers between 0 and 255. But we'd like to represent negative numbers as well. So what we're going to do is reserve half the values for representing negative numbers. Okay? So we're going to use the f number, we're going to uh, be able to represent numbers from 0 up to some maximum positive number of 127. We won't be able to go all the way up to 255 now because instead we're going to use these bit patterns to represent negative numbers. So here's how we're going to do that. Okay, so uh, half, of the pat half the values in this table are the same between unsigned and signed. They represent exactly the same number. But the other half the values are going to be interpreted not as very large positive numbers, but as negative numbers. And the system we're going to use is a little bit unusual and maybe unexpected. Instead of having the negative numbers in the order you might expect, they're in this order, okay? Sort of counting upward. So interestingly enough, we, we, we go upward in the positive direction all through this table. So uh, that's why they're in this order. Um, the bit pattern that represented the largest unsigned number, 255, is also used to represent negative 1. And counting in the negative direction from minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, we go FF, FE, FD, we're counting down. And we keep counting down until, uh, you know, if you look at these as, as unsigned numbers, until we get to this value of a 1 followed by all zeros, and that is our largest negative number, minus 128. So with 2's complement number representation, we can represent 0 and positive numbers up to 127 and negative numbers down to minus 128. I want to note that 127 is ex exactly 2 to the 7th minus 1, and minus 128 is minus 2 to the 7th. So notice we have one more negative number than we have positive numbers, because we have the 0 here. So we have 127 positive values 
and we have 128 negative values. I also want to note about this table that if you look at the most significant bit, it tells you whether the number is negative or not. The most significant bit is a 1 for all the negative numbers. So, so see the 1? And if the most significant bit is 0, it means it's either 0 or a positive number. In other words, it's non-negative. And so if you're looking at the binary representation, you just need to look at the most significant bit to know whether the number is negative or not. If you're looking at a hex representation, then notice that the leading hex digit will tell you whether the number is negative. If it's 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, or F, then it's a negative number. If it's 0 through 7, then it's a positive number or perhaps 0. Another way to look at this um, is that we have a total of 2 to the n, in this case we have 8 bits, so it's 2 to the 8 possible values. So this table has 256 different rows, which is 2 to the 8th. Half of those are negative, okay, so 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 7 is 2 to the 8. 2 to the 7 is 128, so we have 128 negative values, and we have 128 non-negative values. With a byte of 8 bits, we can only represent uh, a small number of different numbers. And that's adequate for a few different applications, but most programs need to be able to represent a lot more numbers, so they use word-sized integers. So now let's take a look at what we can do with a word of 32 bits. So in this table, I have listed all possible values of 32 bits, starting with 000, 32 zeros here, all the way to 32 ones here. I left out a few bits here to save space, and because this table has so many uh, rows, of course I left out quite a few rows. Um, here I'm showing the bit pattern in binary, and here I'm showing it in hex. So we start with 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 and go all the way up to FFFF, FFFF. If we interpret these as unsigned numbers, we go all the way from 0, 1, 2, up to 4,294,967,295. Four zero zero so this table has a lot, a lot of entries. It has 4,294,967,295 lines or rows. And here I'm showing how we use half of the values for negative numbers just as we did with 8 bits. It's the same pattern only we have more bits to work with and more possible combinations so we have a lot more numbers. We have a lot more um, positive and negative numbers we can go all the way up to positive 2 to the 31 minus 1 and our most negative number is minus 2 to the 31. Here the actual values are but you can see with the sign number representation we can go up to a little over 2 billion and we can go down to a little less than minus 2 billion. So instead of having 4 billion positive numbers, we have 2 billion positive and about 2 billion negative numbers. Again, we have the same kind of pattern here where we can use the most significant bit to determine the sign. If the most significant bit is 0, then it's a positive number or possibly 0. So if the most significant bit is 0, the number is non-negative. If the most significant bit is 1, it's a negative number. In binary, it's easy to look at the most significant bit. If the number, if the value is expressed in hex, then notice that the hex values between 0 and 7 are used for 
the non-negative numbers. And if the number starts with 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, or F, then it represents a negative number. And again, just like before, we have 2 to the n possible values. With 32 bits, we have 2 to the 32 possible values. Half of them are negative, so we have 2 to the 31 negative values. That's why our most negative value is minus 2 to the 31. And we have 2 to the 31 positive and 0 values. or That is, we have 2 to the 31 non-negative values. So it goes all the way up because of 0 to 2 to the 31 minus 1. In this slide, I summarize the ranges of numbers using signed values. And I talk about how many different numbers we can represent with 8 bits, or with a half word of 16 bits, or with a word of 32 bits. Here I show the total number of values. It's 2 to the n, where n is the number of bits. So 2 to the 8, which is 256. That's a number you should memorize. With 16 bits, we have 2 to the 16, or we can express that as 64k, a little over 65,000 different values. And with a word, we have 2 to the 32, or four, a little over 4 billion values, 4 gig. We divide that between negative numbers and non-negative numbers, and we see that the largest positive number with a byte is 127, and the most negative number is minus 128. Those are numbers you should remember, 127 and minus 128. With a half word, we can range between, we can go all the way up to 32,767 and all the way down to minus 32,768. Otherwise, we can express that as 2 to the 15 minus 1 or minus 2 to the 15th. And with 32 bits, we have the maximum positive number being 2 to the 31 minus 1, which is 2 gig minus 1. And that's a bit over 2 billion. And the largest or the most negative number is minus 2 to the 31, which is minus 2 gig. Again, minus about 2 billion. So this is the range of numbers we can represent with bytes, half words, and words. And with 64-bit uh, architectures, we can go all the way up to uh, double words, which is um, 2 to the 64 different uh, possible values, and we get uh, absolutely huge numbers, which should be good for just about any application.